Hi everyone, I'm Rajdeep, faculty here at Jinda. In today's video, we'll look at a problem from the CMI BSc entrance of 2023. It's a subjective problem, and instead of figuring out things about a particular concept, we'll actually be looking at many different concepts and results about polynomials. A lot of results, uh, including complex conjugate theorem, Vieta's formulas. uh a gcd of two polynomials and the resulting euclidean algorithm that one can use to find said gcd and even something like rational root theorem all of these results will come together to help us solve this problem so as we can see we are given a polynomial t of x is equal to x to the 4 plus ax cube plus bx square plus cx plus d which is a 4 degree polynomial And it's given that there is exactly one real number r such that p of r is equal to zero, which means that the polynomial has exactly one real root. If a, b, c, d are rational, show that r must be rational, and if a, b, c, d are integers, show that r must be an integer. In the test itself, students were provided this following hint, which was to consider the roots of the derivatives p prime x. And we'll see shortly why that's a really good piece of advice. One thing is how do we read out this condition that there's only one real root? This is where, well, first of all, the fundamental theorem of algebra comes into play. Fundamental theorem of algebra. What does this result say? It says that if p of x is a n degree polynomial then it has n complex roots what does that mean well first of all i would like to add the following extra careful caveat that this is up to multiplicity because the same root can come more than once what does that mean to multi multiplicity what does that mean this essentially lets us write p of x as a product of just linear polynomials It lets us write p of x as x minus a1 x minus a2 all the way up to x minus a n where the a i are the roots of this polynomial p of x and they are all complex numbers now this never says that the ai have to be distinct so something like you know as you might know x square minus well 2x plus 1 is a polynomial right and it has one root only which is one but it occurs twice so considering this multiplicity which is the number of times a root occurs there's n complex roots so for our four degree polynomial it has four complex roots out of which there's only one distinct real root that's what's given here's the next piece of machinery which is the complex conjugate theorem which says that if p of x is a real polynomial by which i mean it's a polynomial all of whose coefficients are real if px is a real polynomial and z is a root of p of x that means p of z is equal to 0 then z bar the complex conjugate of z is also a root so for example if 1 plus i solves this equation for some p of x then 1 minus i also does this isn't actually very hard to prove this follows directly from the properties of complex conjugation complex conjugation respects addition multiplication of complex numbers and that's all that's really happening that is z1 plus z2 are given then their complex conjugate is just z1 plus z2 well 
and if z1 and z2 are given then their complex conjugate is just the product of the conjugate and so if p of z is zero by which i mean a n times z of n all the way up to a zero is equal to zero this implies that the full conjugate that means a n times z n if we want to write the other ones as well all the way up to a one z plus a zero is equal to zero its conjugate is also zero because the conjugate of zero is zero itself in fact this is true for any real number the conjugate of any real number is the number itself because there is no i this implies that a n minus one times because and we we can write a n minus one instead of a n minus one bar because a n minus one is a real number if you recall that p x is a real polynomial z bar to the n all the way up to a one z bar say zero with zero which is just saying that p of z bar is equal to zero now let's see what this means for our result since all complex roots must come in conjugate pairs what this means is that the multiplicity of this real root r is even so it's so the multiplicity of r is either 2 or 4 right because complex conjugate complex roots come in conjugate pairs and so if a plus bi is a root a minus bi will also be a root and they come in pairs and so since the degree of the polynomial is even every and uh, we have only one real root it must occur an even number of times okay we can break this into two cases case 1 this is the easier case at the multi multiplicity of r is 4 what does this mean that p of x is just x minus r four times this is a much easier case because look at what the question is asking us to do it's asking us to show that if all the coefficients of the polynomial are rational then this one in this case this one real root is also going to be rational but that follows from vieta's formula since the first coefficient of this is just x to the 4 minus 4r times x to the 3 and so on i don't really need to look anywhere else 4r is given to be rational and hence r must be rational so in this case 4r is rational implies r is rational right because 4r is p by q for some integers p and q and hence if i divide by 4 there shouldn't be any problem so this is the nice easy case a slightly harder case is that of case 2 Case two says that the multiplicity of R is two. So, what does p of x look like in this case? It looks like x minus R twice times some polynomial, which I know is two degree because so I write this is q of x because p of x is four degree polynomial and this is a quadratic. So, this must also be a quadratic. I don't need to worry about that. This is where our hint. is a very useful one because we know that if r is a root that is repeated that has multiplicity more than one okay then it is also a root of the derivative this follows directly from just taking the derivatives of a polynomial and seeing what would be the roots and i mean this is a nice exercise for all the viewers but for the sake of brevity i will leave this as a for the reader exercise we all love those what <laughs> okay in this case p prime x will have r as a root Times some polynomial, which is going to be a three-degree polynomial, but x minus r will only occur once because x minus r because for p of x the multiplicity is two, and so in p prime x the, the multiplicity drops by one. 
and this is where the GCD and the Euclidean algorithm come into the picture. As some of you might know from number theory, that if you have two numbers, A and B, A and B, where for you know most purposes B is greater than A, then B can be written as A Q plus R, where Q is an integer and R is between zero and A. This is just the quotient and this is just the remain. Turns out that you can do something very similar for polynomials, that if P of X and say P1 of X and P2 of X are two polynomials, then you can find a Q of X and an R of X such that the degree of R is greater than or equal to zero and less than the degree of P2 of X. So whatever theory holds for numbers, for numbers the GCD and Euclidean algorithm theory holds just as well for uh, polynomials. So we can ask, what is the GCD of P of X and P prime of X? And why, why would we do that? Is because this strategy has the best case of catching X minus R as root. Look at this. Q1X has nothing to do with R. And so when we look at the GCD of P of X and P prime X, X minus R will come out cleanly as a GCD without any powers. So what will this mean? Is that the GCD of P of X and P prime of X is just X minus R. Because X minus R occurs only once in the factorization of P prime X. I put factorization in quotes because it's not exactly the same as it is for numbers, but it's almost the same. And so X minus R occurs only once here and X minus R occurs twice here. But then the GCD, it can occur only once and there are no other common factors. So the GCD is just X minus R. But the way the Euclidean algorithm runs, we know that at each step of the way in the, in the Euclidean algorithm, we only deal with rational polynomials because P of X is a rational polynomial and P prime of X is a rational polynomial. And so everything else that will show up is going to be a rational polynomial. And hence, by the, by the way the Euclidean algorithm runs, X minus R is also going to be a rational polynomial. But that just means that R is rational. This is a rational polynomial, which is how we write rational polynomials. Q uh, close bracket X. And so X minus R is a rational polynomial, which implies that R has to be rational. Great. And so that proves part A. Part B is significantly easier in that it follows directly as a result of the rational root theorem. For those of you who don't know, the rational root theorem is a very cool result about polynomials. It says that if a and xn up to a0 is uh, an integer polynomial, where what, what that means is that all the ais, a and up to a0, are integers. And if p by q, a rational number, is a root of, p, of this polynomial, say f of x, Then P divides A0, the constant term, and Q divides AL, the leading term. This also is kind of easy. You just plug in A, uh, P or B by Q instead of X is equal to 0 because P by Q is a root, and then you just clear the denominator, which is Q. So you get a n times p to the n plus a n minus 1 times p to the n minus 1 q all the way up to a1 q to the n minus 1 times p plus a0 q to the n is 0. This is just now a little bit of number theory gives us the result. Here, all over here, we have a q. So we can take a q common out. And then when we can put it to the other side and just get minus q is equal to a times p to the n. But here, p by q could easily be uh, assumed to be in the reduced form such that the GCD of p and q can be assumed to be one. Any rational number can be written like that. So since q and p are co-prime, q 
Q doesn't divide P to the n, and so Q has to divide A to the n. And by a very similar argument, P has to divide A naught. What does this mean for our polynomial? It's a monic polynomial in that the leading coefficient is 1. So if P by Q was a rational root, then Q would have to be 1 or minus 1, or that the rational root would have to be an integer. If A, B, C, D are integers, that means you have an integer polynomial. In particular, you have a rational polynomial. And so by part A, the R must be a rational number. So you have a rational root. And since the leading term of this polynomial is 1, the leading coefficient is 1, It also the rational root must actually be an integer. Well, that's all there is to it. It's a very nice problem that involves many different ideas about polynomials. And I hope that you ended this video being a little more comfortable with polynomials and all of the results that we saw here. Thank you for watching.